Welcome back. We're here with another Blender tutorial around something that maybe you'll play at a concert, maybe you'll play at your uh, cousin's kickback on a projector. Nonetheless, we're going to dive into some very simple uh, shapes. I'm going to show you how to pretty much like non-destructively cut holes through things. And we're going to get like this very like square walking through different boxes. I'm going to show you something very simple with you. You can probably go ahead and put different environments, different assets in them. The world is your oyster. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. Okay, jumping right on in per usual. Let's go ahead and double check render engine Eevee, ambient occlusion bloom, screen space reflections. Run over here to your preferences. Make sure that your animation is set to linear. Once we have that, we're ready to start modeling here. So that's what we're going to start off with. So let's go ahead and delete our default, our default setup here. Let's add another cube. Don't even know why we deleted our default cube, but it's cool. It's the way things are. What you're gonna, what you're gonna want to do now is let's go ahead and scale this up to four. Let's bring it up to right about there. <clears throat> the reason why I scale it to four is we're gonna have essentially two of these and we're gonna do the same pattern when we animate through eight meters. So now what we're gonna wanna do is we wanna cut some holes into the cube, kinda like a doorstep. But <clears throat> let's set up a camera just so we can see how big we want that door to be. So let's make one of our one of our planes. One of our work spites. Show the camera. Let's bring another cube. I'm gonna name this cube. I'm gonna name this cube a Boolean. Just because that's what we're about to play with. Um what you're gonna wanna do. Pay very close attention. Many times I've done and watch these tutorials I always kind of like mess up what I learned a little trick is if you delete the faces of where you're gonna be cutting through you can cut you'll be able to see through a little bit better so let's go ahead and select our cube I'm gonna call it main main cube go to the modifier tab which is that blue wrench select Boolean. That's where you both find it. Here, it's one of those I don't really do too often. It's like Boolean. You can kind of see already we're cutting through, um, but we don't want it to be that big. So we're gonna pull our camera up actually because I feel like we should be smack dab center of the cube. Over to our camera, make sure that we pretty much only see what's going on in the camera, just so we don't have any distractions here, you know. So we could scale, scale is about right there. We can play around, scale on the X to make it look a little more like a door, bring it down a little bit, go back to our camera. Turn on some composition guys just so we can see the center of it all. You can kind of see. Once you pull your camera in, we're gonna walk right through it. So <clears throat> it's just a lot of things in a really quick phrase or way, and I'm gonna go ahead and recap this for you. So essentially what we have, we have a big cube here, call our main cube. What we did is we added a modifier called a boolean and on the difference layer. Essentially that boolean is just another square cube and you're just going to position it essentially like it's just going to interject. And if you're not seeing it cut holes through this, it's because you probably didn't delete the faces. So you have to go back into the edit mode and then delete the two faces that kind of will create that window of seeing what you need to see. Okay. And now if you want, what you can do is you can simply just like turn that 
off but you see we still have a little bit of protruding kind of elements here what I do is I'll just scale it on the y-axis and just make it very thin you want it to kind of pretty much closely match the if you can get it to closely match essentially what's going on in terms of the width of the perimeter of the cube you're in good you're in good places all right so what we're going to do before turning it off we're going to duplicate this boolean essentially so for shift d we're on the y-axis and we're just going to pull it right about there and we're just gonna go ahead and go to main cube, add another boolean. This one's gonna be going to the second one. As you can see right now, we pretty much have something going right through our first square. I'm gonna try something that I haven't tried before when I was modeling this the first time. If we add it to a collection, I call this loop. And then if I duplicate this into instance, perfect. You can see now we essentially have, like always, something where you can kind of see through. So do the same thing I just did essentially is you're going to select all of your booleans and the main cube and put it into a collection, which is control M, I mean M by itself. And then if you do shift A, collection instance, pull in the loop. Then you could just do, oops, shift D, duplicate it. Shift R, shift R, shift R, shift R, shift R. Now you have this infinite kind of uh, setup going on here. Now what you want to do as well, is let's go ahead and bring our camera inside. Okay, so let's go ahead and animate this and get this started. So within the location of the camera, I would, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of drop this into negative eight. Just cause we want it to be somewhere that's nice solid number. And if I do negative 16, I'm going to be back. Okay, so now we're going to do 8 to me forward. Insert that. So if we test it, it's kind of it's kind of the same. You're getting, you're getting a little bit of a glitch here, which makes it a little bit more difficult to see. Hmm. It loops. Cool. So now we have our looping kind of square set up, which is great. We love that. I'm going to do something a little more organized this time around. Call it loop collection. I'm going to make that blue. I'm going to make our original loop red. Cool. I'm going to call this default collection green we got some nice colors going on here it's the first time i ever really clean things up for you guys let's set this into the wireframe now and now we're going to play with our materials and our lighting because hey how are we going to do this you know so you can see here if we look on the top this is where it's starting and that's where it's ending and here's where things get a little more interesting if you want to have multiple colors, we need to add different light bulbs. If you want to don't if you don't mind having the same color and just kind of like animating rooms, then we could do some stuff in composition. We can get this psychedelic kind of effect, which is great. And we're gonna do the latter, we're just gonna do the psychedelic effect because I feel like let's just keep things simple for now and then we can run with it at the end of the day. So within our base loop. Just go ahead and select that so you can see exactly what cube it is. So you can do it on the left. And we're going to go ahead and add in point light. We're going to add it right here. And we're going to add it on the bottom. 
and we're gonna move. We're gonna have another one. Just move it like in this subtle kind of zone. You can see now we have quite a few lights going on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play with these lights. I'm just gonna give make it like 50 watts. Let's make it a nice blue. Actually, I'm gonna show you something kind of cool. So if you go over here, something called colors. Don't mind all my stuff. Train was going by. So come into colors and select vibrant. And from here, we can kind of see some cool, uh, vibrant colors. And I think we're just going to go ahead and copy this one. So let's bring in this like tan kind of color. And let's bring in this like blue ish kind of color. I'm going to play with the wattage soon. Right now we have this tan, dark blue, bluish. Let's add one more color because I feel like it's like meh, you know? We could add a little bit more. Alright, so if we click rendered. Interesting. That gray kind of takes everything. All right, so I'm gonna finagle with the colors a little bit. Feel free to skip this part or just tune in. If you have your own colors, we're going to stop it when we have the right wattage. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring this up. Cool. So, cool. So, hopping right back in, let's go ahead and now play with the uh, materials. Come into uh, material editor, go to shader, click new. I'm going to call this our main cube. Once you start upping the metallic, you can see things are going to get a little more interesting. It's kind of cool. You can see the actual reflection on the light bulbs now. Um, let's go ahead and play with this a little bit. Let's do some roughness stuff. Let's add a bump node to our normal. And let's add Musgrave texture to our height. You can see things are getting a little more crazy. D. Press Control T for mapping. Do texture coordinate uh, object to vector. And then we're gonna pull down the scale just a tiny bit. Okay. About eight. So the reason why we did 4D is so we can actually animate the movement of this all. So you're gonna go ahead and select it, keyframe into the W. Um, go to 125, just a half a point, hold shift, and just drag it just a subtle amount. This is what depends on the speed of it all. Put this back to zero, right click, insert keyframe. And you'll see now we have that like, glitching effect, and we have 
this playful kind of thing. So let's go ahead and make sure our background is a little bit darker. That's one thing we didn't do. It's in the environment. And one thing I also did, what's in, what's in my metallic? Hit color ramp, go back to the metallic. Let's drag it down a bit. So magic texture, attach the color. To the, oh, actually, I think it's attached to the factor. Attach the factor. Let's double check if it's working. You can kind of see it here. Pull it in a bit. Now we have that polka dot kind of effect. I think if we play with the base color, yeah, see how dark it gets. Let's pump it up. What we can do as well. Now we have our pretty much our base animation rolling, which you can do, in my opinion, is find the color that you want to pop the most. I'm gonna go ahead and select this like purple one, right? Uh, let's see, 300. Now we have like this darkish kind of thing. So now we have this very playful, very elegant, very trippy, add some music if you want to up the tempo I'll show you a little trick right now you can zoom in or zoom out and you see that it becomes a lot bigger of like a, a square but things get a little more interesting you zoom in it gets a little bit um, slower let's bring it back to our default let's add a little bit of depth of field what I like to do to test that depth of field is get really close to one of these. Let me see, it's looking pretty all right. Okay, last step. Now we're gonna make it really trippy. Go over here to the compositor, bring in a reroute, add a viewer node, add that lens distortion, my favorite. Disperse it just a tad bit. Move this. Uh, let's move this. Let's render a still a frame real quick just so we can kind of see what's going on here. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Now you're going to do mix. From the mix node, we're going to go ahead and make this a value add. Oh, wait. Uh, is it difference? Oh boy, my friend. <laughs> All right. I want you to value add. You can see it's getting a lot more trippy than usual. And you can add another mix node. And if you want to change the color of it, This will change pretty much like the whole color. And you can give it just a subtle, subtle bit. I'll go back to my like blues. And from there, I believe we have the animation. So I'm gonna run this and I'm gonna come back and just kind of recap uh, everything that pretty much happened. And this time I'll show the project file because I know sometimes this stuff can get pretty uh, complicated and I just want to share as much as I can to help you out so catch you in a bit when we render this I'm gonna go ahead and show how I set up my renders just in case you're like Michael what do you mean how do we even uh, render these things well I'm gonna go ahead and show you so I'm gonna call this test render tutorial mp4 Actually lost us. 
Oh, I didn't even save the... My friends, I didn't even save the freaking uh, file. LOL. Oh, well. Square it, tutorial. I've been thinking about uh, doing some videos around goals and stuff, but... Alright, so you finish, give yourself a nice hearty pat on the back, you did something, you took some time, you showed up for yourself, and that creative expression. So, now we have this very, like, Tame Impala-esque kind of thing. You can just play at your friend's kickback on the projector, and honestly, I hope that you get a chance to expand on it some more, maybe add some materials in between each square, but just make sure that everything starts exactly how it finishes. Um, so thank you once again. Thanks for dropping in. Thanks for the support. I really appreciate every single comment I read. Uh, read and respond to everyone. It's almost like a little bit of snail mail, and I appreciate it. Um, hope to see you around, and I'll leave some links in the bio or the description. <laughs> Catch you around. Have a good one.